From the Prix Roubaix to the Tour de France, I've had the opportunity to help design bikes ridden by the world's most elite riders, including the fastest legal racing bicycle in the world. But the best part about my job is that I get to design, test, and perfect those bikes here in the Black Forest. This is my happy place, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you haven't seen any of our videos before, my name is Jonathan, and along with my wife Ashton and our son Jack, we are the Black Forest family. So in a few videos now, you've probably seen me hint at the fact that I work in the cycling industry and that actually is what brought me to Germany. But I've never actually gone into depth about it. So for today, I'm going to tell my story. And also, I want to provide some helpful tips to you if you want to come and work in Germany too. So for me to actually get this story started, I need to go back to the very beginning. So to my core, I am a kid from Kansas City, and from a very early age, you could always find me on a bicycle riding up and down 69th Street where I grew up. And I used to always ask my mom, how far can I go and ride my bike? And she always told me, oh no, you can only go to this person's house because you're this old, you're too young to go farther than that. So every year I used to always push the boundaries. How far can I go on my bicycle by myself? So although I have a lot of very fond memories early on in my childhood on riding a bicycle, it was also a really great mechanism for me to escape. So I haven't mentioned this before and I probably won't again, but when I was 11 years old, I unexpectedly lost my dad. It, this was a very traumatic experience and cycling was a very good coping mechanism. It was my time to get away. So let's blow past my childhood here and let's move on to college. Um, so I ended up going to school at the University of Missouri and it was a no brainer for me to join the Mizzou cycling team. So when I was in college, I did everything on my bike. I raced road bikes, I raced mountain bikes, I raced dual slalom bikes, I raced downhill bikes. I did everything. This was my way for me to meet people and for me to spend my weekends. And if you fast forward to graduate school, I ended up getting very competitive. When I was in graduate school, I had a couple of uh, state championships under my belt and you could usually find me on the podium of whatever race I could find for that weekend. So. <laughs> I did go to graduate school to be in graduate school, not to just see how fast I could get on my bike. And a little bit of a background with my education, I got my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering with a minor in mathematics. And then in graduate school, I got my master of science in mechanical engineering. But I am really proud of this master's thesis project that I had and the research that I was putting in, I was very passionate about it. And it was really great for me to work with my amazing team in this project. Basically, my project was the design and optimization of an orthopedical pedicle screw out of a polylactic acid hydroxyapatite nanofiber reinforced composite. But for anybody who doesn't know what that means, I designed a plastic screw that goes into your spine that dissolves over time so you don't need a second surgery. At the end of my master's degree, I was applying for jobs everywhere. The job market at the time was super saturated and even with a master's degree, I was struggling to get interviews anywhere. And because of my thesis in the medical industry, I thought even about applying for jobs in Switzerland because there were plenty available. And you know, this is really a far-fetched dream. Never did I think that would actually happen. It was just something fun for me to Google and think about what could have happened. And most of my applications went out within the United States. And because you know now of my passion for cycling, yes, I did apply to every single cycling company that I could think of at the time. And for the most part, I was turned down. This is how people do it now, Nikki. They have their interviews oh, on the internet. I like it. I know. Child okay, here they are. And when I hit this, yeah, they'll be able to straight, see us. So come on and get in here close so we can be seen in the webcam. See, see how small the webcam is? No, get you, get you. Nick, come here, but don't crown me. We can see you guys. Okay, good. You got it. Hi, my name is Billy. But sometimes it's not what you know; it is who you know. And luckily for me, I knew somebody in the cycling industry, and they were kind enough to help me actually get an interview for a job. And you know, I have to say the interview went pretty well and they decided to take a chance on me. So I landed what I could really consider even still today, my dream job. 
I was absolutely on cloud nine. So I packed up all my stuff and my dog and I headed out to the East Coast to start my career. My first year of working on the East Coast was full of highs and lows. I had to take everything that I've learned in textbooks and try to apply it into the real world. And for me, that was a lot of hours and it was a lot of struggling, but I was able to do it. And at the end, I'm now obviously a better engineer because of it. However, in the end, I didn't actually end up staying on the East Coast very long. There were some opportunities for me to enrich my engineering experiences and learn firsthand how things are actually made. And that actually ended up being an opportunity for me to spend three months living in Taiwan. Like many companies, my employer had offices in multiple countries around the world, and Taiwan was one of them. I got to spend my three months going from factory to factory to see firsthand how things are actually made. I got to see how forgings are made, how casts are cast, how composites are laid up and molded and machined and turned into bicycles. And these types of opportunities were a wonderful way for me to connect a 3D model on my computer into a real product by seeing the entire life cycle of the raw material, to the formed part, to the machining process, to the finished and painted product. You know, Taiwan also wasn't just for work. For me, this was a huge opportunity for me to grow as a person. At this point, I've only traveled out of the United States two times, three times maybe, and I was a complete amateur at traveling. Never was I in Asia before this trip, so my eyes were wide open. I was a young guy, I was there by myself, I got to do whatever I wanted, so this was a great opportunity for me to meet people and learn new cultures and really just grow. And if you've ever been to Asia as a Westerner, it is a great place for you to go far beyond your normal comfort zone. So I think the best way to really you know, visualize this is the food, because I have tried everything. Stinky tofu, fried octopus, stomachs, chicken feet, basically any type of organ or anything apart with a Animal, I had to eat it. Crickets too, fried crickets. Yeah, those, those were actually fairly tasty. But really for me, the best part of Taiwan was the people. I have never met a country filled with so many genuinely happy people in my entire life. Their smiles are infectious. They always want to know how you are, what you're doing, what you did over the weekend. And they're not just doing that to be polite. They actually want to know. And you know, I was 20 something years old. I was there by myself and I really feel like I left the country with some lifelong friends. Although I have traveled back several times since that trip for work um, because of the pandemic, it's been a very long time now and I really do hope I get to come back again soon. So my three months in Taiwan and just absorbing and living in the factories had to come to an end. But my employer didn't actually have me come back to the States. I had another opportunity for me to go to Germany. So my company was opening a brand new remote engineering office in the city of Freiburg. And guys, I was so excited to move there. Obviously, it is gorgeous, but I was absolutely floored by how many cyclists I saw going about their day to day. And also the mountain bike trails, which were just spaghettied all through the hills. And the roads were just straight out of just like a dream, basically. So for me being a passionate cyclist, Freiburg was, I couldn't have wished for anything more. But on the flip side, moving to Germany was a lot of work. I did not speak more than three words of German when I came here because the trip was really pretty short notice. And all during a three month period, I had to register, get a phone, get a bank account, get all of my stuff from storage onto a boat to come to Freiburg and also find an apartment. It was extremely overwhelming. And guys, speaking about language, I wish I started earlier. I was overwhelmed with the amount of work I had to do just to get myself settled. And also I was really struggling to continue paying for my rent after the deposit, after buying a kitchen, after buying all of the light fixtures. There really wasn't much left over at the time to pay for classes. 
And if you've watched some of our recent videos, you know now that we're actually studying German again with Lagoda, and this is something I really wish I found back then. Because of my schedule, I could have taken classes at any time of the day, and the prices would have actually fit my budget at the time. And if you're not familiar with Lingoda, they are an online language school. They have classes 24 hours a day with native speaking teachers, and you can easily find a class that suits you kind of whenever you want. And not only is their platform easy and intuitive to use, the classes are actually quite fun. Möchten Sie synaktisch einen Fang gucken? Käseplätze gehören zu den traditionellen deutschen Rezepten. And guys, really one of the best parts about this is when you finish your language level, they'll give you a CEFR language certificate that you can use for whatever you need when you're moving to Germany. So if you're somebody who's looking to get an EU blue card or a permanent settlement visa like a Niederlassungserlaubnis, this is a certificate you can use to finish that process. So we love taking classes here and we have an exclusive discount for you too. So click the link down below in the description to get 40% off of your marathon course or your first month subscription. So guys, like I mentioned, moving to Germany was a ton of work. Yes, it is a lot of fun, but you need to put in the work to actually get to enjoy it. And when my first two year contract was up, I felt like I was just getting settled. So naturally I asked my employer for a another two year contract. And then just like the first two, the next two just flew by and I was falling in love with Germany. So I love cycling in Freiburg. It is a dream for me, but its location in Europe means I can easily go to Switzerland and race or Austria or Italy or the French mountains. And all of these beautiful locations really aren't that far away. And if you want to learn a little bit something about me, I love challenging myself. I have done long distance mountain bike racing in Germany and Switzerland and Austria and Italy and to France. And I've actually rode my bike self-supported from Freiburg, Germany to Nice, France. All with me on my bike and camping along the way and the hard way too, through the Swiss Alps, the French Alps and the Italian Alps, the long and hard way all the way into the sea. But really, I love it. This is my heaven. And guys, by this point, four years have gone by, so I asked for another extension to my contract. And at this point, Ashton entered the picture. We got married, she moved in, and we were now together in Germany. And with her here in Germany, it was feeling more like home every day. And it felt like we both had an opportunity to pursue our dreams together. And at the end of these seven years, I talked to my company and we agreed to turn my temporary expat contract into a permanent German contract. And at this point, switching to a permanent German contract meant I really actually got to feel like I was here permanently, this was my home, and I can really start growing some roots. And at this point, talking about German work contracts, I think it's important to point out the different types of German work visas that are available. When I first came to Germany, I had something that was called a German work visa for qualified professionals. And really, this type of visa is for somebody who has specialized training or an advanced degree. And I really should mention, there is something that is called an EU blue card. And I really wish that I qualified for this when I came here. And really, when I came here, I did not qualify it because as I mentioned, I was straight out of school. I had one year under my belt and the EU blue card requires five years of experience in your work field. And guys, if you're able to get the blue card when you come here, absolutely do it. It's gonna put you on the fast track for permanent residence and you don't have to just continue applying and applying again for these temporary visas. First things first, the responsibility is with the employee, not the employer. So this means you are actually responsible for applying for the work visa and all of the heavy lifting. But I was very lucky in this process. I had an employer who handled everything for me and if I have any advice to you, it's to do the same thing. Find an employer who is willing to support you with an immigration lawyer. This lawyer handled everything for me, not just the applications, but 
all of the paperwork along the way, and they even joined me into all of the different meetings that I had to attend. These were the people who talked to the Auslander Bohorda, or the immigration office, because again, I knew about three words of German at the time. And they really took a huge stress off of my shoulders because moving here is not easy. You have plenty of stresses to worry about, and this is not the biggest one. And if you're looking to learn more about German work visas, we have written an entire blog post about this and all of the details are there, including checklists for everything you need to complete this process. So I really recommend you check it out. And my last piece of advice, if you're moving here to Germany and you have this application for the Ausländer Behörde, it is to do it as soon as possible. For example, right now, due to this pandemic, wait times are longer than ever. So we are members of many different groups on Facebook for expats in Germany, and there is one common theme that we've seen over the last couple of years, and it's people who are really worried about actually being able to get their appointments at the Ausländer Behörde to get their visa approved in time. You know, many people come here under a tourist visa if they're from the Schengen area, and that's for only three months, and they hope to turn that visa into an actual work visa. And if you don't get that done within the three months, you need to leave the country. So take it from me, guys. Just like registering with the city you live, do it as soon as possible, immediately when you arrive. And it's important to point out that work visa is not the only piece of paper you have to have. The work visa is what you need to work, but you need to also have a residence permit to reside. So when I first moved to Germany, I had what was called an Aufenthaltserlaubnis, which is a temporary resident permit. And this was essentially a permit that allowed me to live in Germany for just two years. Sometimes they go up to four years and you can continue applying for them for as long as you maintain your employment status. And guys, I have to say the Aufenthalter Lomness is really just kind of built as a stepping stone for you to get to the golden ticket, the thing that everybody wants to have, and that is called the Niederlassungser Lomness. So the reason why this is the golden ticket that everybody's aiming for, it allows you to live in Germany for an indefinite amount of time. You don't have to keep applying and applying again. You can finally live here, you can finally start growing some roots. And I have to say, the amount of time you have to wait to get this Niederlassungserlaubnis can vary wildly. It really kind of depends on the type of visa or work permit you have, as well as your education and your profession. Like I mentioned before, I had a German work visa for qualified professionals. So I basically had to wait five years before I was capable of applying for the permanent resident permit mostly because I needed to meet the B1 language requirements. And really, if you have the EU blue card, you can do this in 33 months or as little as 21 months if you have a very special case. So let me tell you why we think having a neater lastings or loudness is very advantageous. So for starters, it is just the security. Like I said, you don't have to keep applying and applying again for new work permits or resident visas or whatever, like you have this one document and you are here. You are here and you are permanent. And really most importantly, everybody worries about what happens when I lose my job. Well, if you have a permanent visa, you can take unemployment. While you're searching for your new job, you don't have to worry about when your temporary contract ends and how quickly you have to pack up your house and sell your car and your items and move back to the country that you came from. And speaking of houses, a Nieder Lossinger alumnus actually allows you to apply for a home loan, like just like I did. I was approved for a loan because I had a Nieder Lossinger alumnus and they specifically asked for it. And this is really important to point out again, because if I were to somehow lose my dream job, I don't have to sell my house and immediately evacuate the country. I can stay and find a new job. And ultimately, this allows us to put down permanent roots in the Black Forest. We now live here. This is our home. There is nothing contingent about it. All right, guys. So if you've made it this far in the video, as you know, I have been in Germany for a very long time and I really want to give you some tips for how you can find a job in Germany too. First things first, if you really want to find a good job in Germany, it 
really depends on your expertise. In jobs for engineers, doctors, nurses, IT specialists, the jobs are in very high demand. And if you have training in these areas, it might be very easy for you to find a job here too. So for example, my company is actively looking for engineers and we are definitely not the only ones. And the second piece of advice I have to give is to follow in the footsteps of what I did and is to find a national employer who also has an office in Germany. So honestly, I mean, I might be a little bit biased, but I do think this is the best way to do it because you're working for a company from your home country and they're speaking the language that you probably do already. And fortunately for you, they have an office in Germany that you might have the option to go and join. And this is really the best of the two worlds because this is a company you're already familiar with. You can move to the new country. There's no culture shock for your work atmosphere. And they're probably gonna help cover all of the costs for you to get here. So if this strategy doesn't work for you and you wanna work for a German employer, we have some tips for you. For starters, we recommend going to graduate school in Germany and getting a German degree. Not only will you learn German quickly, you'll be on the fast track to get a Niederlassungserlaubnis. The second strategy you can do is get an internship in Germany. This is actually something I would have done if I wasn't lucky enough to get the job that I had. Not only will an internship allow you to get your feet wet in the country, it'll most likely turn into a position at the company. Last but not least, the biggest piece of advice I can give you, learn German. Speaking German at business fluency is a requirement for most jobs, not all of them, but most of them. I feel like I should mention here, I have what my wife says is a unicorn job and I speak English all day, every day in all my communication. And this is not something that is that common. It is out there, but do not expect to find it. I am the exception. I am not the rule. Learn German. All right guys, so that wraps up my video today of how I landed my dream job in Germany. If you have any questions for me on how I got here that I did not answer today, let me know down in the comments. Or if you have any advice for any people who are wanting to work in Germany, let them know down in the comments so you can help them out as well. And as always guys, if you enjoyed what you saw today, hit that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time, bis bald.